Paul, there's been some uh, recent non-DOM changes uh, in the UK. Perhaps you can provide just the headlines of, of what's going on, appreciating the f finer details that are still getting thrashed out. Uh, yes, it's uh, it's come a, a little bit of a, uh, I think, a surprise to uh, to the industry that these rules have changed, having existed for some 100, 200 years or so. Um, and they've been a bedrock of, for some of the industries on the Isle of Man in terms of establishing offshore structures and such like. The, the new rules uh, essentially are going to come into play from 6th of April 2025. Uh, from that point forward, essentially the concept of domicile is going to disappear from UK taxation. Uh, that uh, is going to affect very possibly behaviours of individuals who live here and who are living in the UK because they will have to make a decision whether they want to move from the UK or not from the tax perspective. Um, and uh, and in and in, and in many, many respects, the, there's 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 I mean there's a lot to think about. The legislation hasn't yet been produced. I think once that is produced, it will give people a better idea of how they need to position themselves. And what are the headlines that are, that are there at the moment? The broad headlines are that um, uh, individuals who've been uh, uh, non-resident for um, uh, for ten years uh, will be able to go back to the UK for a four-year period for tax years. Um, and they will be able to bring in their foreign income and gains in that four-year period without paying any taxation charges. Let's say historically we were reliant upon the remittance basis, they were reliant upon the remittance basis, um, and they would be taxed on what they brought in. But no, those rules are go. If individuals have been long-term uh, UK residents, essentially more than four years, they will then be taxed on their worldwide income and gains. How does that interact? We think about the offshore world and trust structures, maybe that are already in place. How does that interact with those existing structures? <clears throat> well, existing trusts are going to be, um, be essentially de depend upon the, the status of the individual. Uh, existing trusts are going to be uh, become transparent if they if the individuals have been long term UK residents in terms of they lose their protected status. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, for some trusts which have been established uh, by non-UK settlers, for example, uh, the, the, there's, there's, a, there's a little change there, but individuals are going to be taxed on what they get out of the trusts as before, uh, unless they've been in the UK for less than four years. Okay. And do the changes also present opportunities? Because obviously just listening, there seems to be a narrowing of opportunities moving forward, but there is the... Is there still opportunities there? Well, there, there are some opportunities for, for, uh, for example, somebody who lives in the Isle of Man may make a decision to um, relocate to the UK and find if they've got lots of in offshore income and capital gains, be able to bring that offshore income and gains into the UK uh, without paying a tax charge, provided they can cease Manx residence. Uh, you will also find there will be possibly migration the other way of individuals who want to escape the charges uh, for the, the remittance basis going forward and they will want to leave the UK because they don't have such advantageous tax treatment. What's also happening, um, although it's open to consultation at the moment, is for inheritance tax purposes the regime is going to change completely such that now if an individual is UK resident for 10 years um, they're going to be within the scope of inheritance tax. Uh, if they wish to leave the UK and they've been resident for 10 years, then there is a so-called 10-year tail and they'll be within the scope for the following 10 years. So that that's, uh, is going to represent a, an interesting concept but what, um, for those individuals. But what also might happen as a result of, for example, the Isle of Man residents, they can, because it's residence-based test and not domicile, they can move to the UK for up to 10 tax years. Uh, and pay no inheritance tax. So individuals, you know, perhaps later in life, might move back to the UK. And if they uh, if they pass away, for example, in the, in the UK, there will be no inheritance tax if it's before a 10-year period. I know that sounds rather gruesome, but it's, it's, it's one of those things that could happen. You might find people will move backwards and forwards. Yeah, OK. And the, the, obviously, I'm sure you're super excited about the finer detail of these things to have a read and help you sleep at night. When are they anticipated to be out? Uh, I think they're going to be out later in the in sort of summer time. I believe I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'm not sure about super excited. I think uh, I think the rules are going to be incredibly complicated because they have to deal with the transitional provisions and also the new provisions going forward. Yeah. Inheritance tax uh, is still open to consultation. I think those rules are going to come later once the consultation period is over.
Okay. Thanks for joining us. I suppose what we'd say, much like the end of the substance conversations, it's a complex area. So when you need some advice, pick up the phone and have a conversation with you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Cheers.